Okay, hi folks. My name's Ali from the Florist Books team. We're an independent children's publisher based here in Edinburgh, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Edinburgh Children's Library uh, and welcome you to the launch event for this fabulous picture book, A Billion Balloons of Questions by the lovely Amy Moreno. Um, we'll hear lots from Amy very soon. Before we get started, a couple of bits of housekeeping. Uh, there is an accessible toilet in the wee corridor there just where you came in. Um, the light is the pull cord on your left. Please remember to lock the door. Um, if the fire alarm sounds, please exit using the main entrance where you came in, uh, unless that entrance is on fire, in which case you can get out through the door at the back there. Um, we are live streaming this event on our YouTube channel, which is being looked after by my colleague Craig here, who has changed his jumper because we came to work this morning in the same jumper. Um, <laughs> Really did be a solid there, thank you. Uh, none of you should be visible on the live stream, so don't worry about your hair, but when we come to the Q&A section at the end of the event, you will be audible on the live stream if you ask a question. Um, that's the boring stuff out of the way, so I'm gonna hand over now to our editor, Sally Paulson, who's going to say a few words about working on this book with Amy. new bit of technology for me. Um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about how we came to publish this beautiful book. Um, so back in distant pre-COVID times, in I think January 2019, um, we uh, set up um, a session on writing for children with Glasgow Women's Library. And I was really excited about it. Lots of people were interested. And I think there was a lot of stormy weather and the numbers kind of gradually dwindled and there were just three people came along but I thought you know what I hope I can share some useful advice with these three aspiring writers and um, I certainly wasn't expecting to find a new author from those just those three authors um, so it was really really exciting that Amy was one of those people who came along and not only did she have a great idea for a story she brought along this beautifully fleshed out little mock-up picture book of what went on to be a billion balloons of questions. Um, now, you may think it's easy to write a picture book, but it's just a simple little story um, pitched for the right age group. It's so, so much harder than that. Um, and Amy did, has done so many things um, perfectly from the very beginning. Um, I do know what those things are, but I just need a, <laughs> a little reminder. Um, so her, right from the beginning, her book had a crystal clear concept. She'd already structured her story beautifully into double page spreads, picture books working in spreads. Um, not only had she thought about the illustrations, but she'd actually drawn little examples. She'd kind of roughly illustrated the book herself, which really helped us to see her vision for the book. She had, uh, the book was written in a perfect tone for children um, aged three to six. And she also had this endless list of fun and quirky, seemingly random questions that children ask. And, and um, I was, uh, why are oranges orange? Really struck me as soon as I read that. I just thought that's exactly the kind of thing that my daughter would ask. Um, and oh, I was really excited as well that the book was bilingual because I studied Spanish at university. So the thought of actually being able to publish a book in English and Spanish was really, really exciting. And thankfully, when I shared Amy's proposal with the team at Florist, they were all just as charmed and um, impressed as I was. And we were really, really thrilled to be able to offer Amy a contract. Now, of course, um, a picture book isn't just about the words. It's also about the illustrations. So our art director, Leah, set about trying to find the perfect illustrator for this book. We were looking for somebody who could bring this amazing um, idea of the balloons of questions to life. And we were also hoping for somebody who could bring some authentic kind of Latino flavor to the book. So Aaliyah was absolutely thrilled when she found Carlos, whose the balloons are really more than we could ever have imagined. His artwork's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I think you'll hear from Carlos a little bit later. Which, and actually, um, Amy and Carlos were able to meet um, because he came to Edinburgh this summer, just happened to go on holiday. So that was really, really lovely um, to be able to get together like that. So, um, we're absolutely thrilled to be publishing 
a billion balloons of questions and sharing it with all of you. And we really hope that you enjoy it as much as we've enjoyed working on it with Amy. Thank you, Sally. It's always so lovely to get a sense of the journey that a book has been on from the initial idea to the finished article. Um, right. Are we ready for a story? <laughs> Is everybody sitting comfortably and ready to listen? Yeah. Yes. In that case, reading her debut picture book, A Billion Balloons of Questions, please join me in welcoming Amy Moreno. Usually I would read this to just children, so I will be looking at the children instead of at the adults because that might be a bit weird. And usually I would hold it up and go through, but kids, if you look on the screen, you can see the page that I'm talking about. This is a billion balloons of questions. Hello, buenos dias, I'm Eva, and from the moment I wake up, my day is full of questions. Mama says I have billions of questions. But really, I have balloons of questions. I carry them around with me all day until I can find the answers. If I floated on a cloud, how high would I go? Is today a school day? Que hora es? My little brother Saul has sticky hands, a cute smile, and lots and lots of loud questions that he asks over and over again, like, more toast for Sol, otra tosada para Sol. More toast, please. More toast for Sol, otra tosada para Sol. More toast, please. More toast for Sol, more toast for Sol. How can a small person be so loud? How does Sol get so much jam on his face? Why are oranges orange? Mama and Papa often put on that face and ask boring questions like, how many times I have to tell you to brush your teeth, Eva? And, donde están tus zapatos? How does a crocodile keep all its teeth clean? Well, my friends want to play superhero animals today. Mama and Papa ask questions that feel all nice and cosy inside too, like, do you know how much I love you? I ask this much, I see. Mama says, oh, much more than that, sweet pea. Could I make a hug that would last all day? Mrs. McGregor asks learning questions like, what color do we get if we mix blue and yellow? And I say, verde. Who named all the colors? When will we do science experiments? My friends ask exciting questions like, do you want to play superhero animals? And I like that question because the answer is always, C, C, C. Who will I be? The alpaca magica or fearless fox? My abuelita on the screen in Peru has sensible questions like, ¿Cómo está Cevita? So I say, muy bien abuelita. And she asks, ¿Te gusta la sofita? So I say, sí abuelita, me gusta la sofita. My papá makes the best soup. ¿Dónde está Peru? When will abuelita visit us? Does abuelita's dog Coco bark in Spanish? Wow, wow. Sometimes I listen to other people's questions all day long while my bunch of balloons keeps growing until my head is full of big questions, small questions, dark questions and bright questions. What can I do about all the plastic in the ocean? Where are rainbows made? Los unicornios existen? Where does the light go? Where does the light wait before I switch it on? Why do some people have no home? ¿Cuál planeta es el más grande? Mama and Papa can't always answer my questions. I ask, Papa, Papa, ¿qué? He says, estoy ocupado, Eva. Uy. So I have to wait. And I feel my question get bigger and bigger y más grande y enorme and I can't hold it in and boom, the question pops out. Can a space rocket fly backwards? But we often look for the answers together, even if I have to wait for a bit. Can a space rocket fly backwards? When did the first people speak and what did they say? And other times, when the grown-ups don't know, I can dream up the answers by myself. 
Does the world spin faster when it's windy? Some days by bedtime, all my questions have been answered and my balloons have floated away. Ah, when did the first people speak and what did they say? Does the world spin faster when it's windy? Can a space rocket fly backwards? Other days, I tie my leftover balloons to the bedpost for the next day, then get tucked in and go to sleep. Buenas noches. ¿Qué vamos a comer mañana? What does the tooth fairy dream about? Every morning, there are more balloons waiting for me to explore. Which superhero animal will I be today? Do bats get dizzy hanging upside down? ¿Qué vamos a comer hoy? How does the sun rise? What questions are inside your balloons today? Now, we all know that picture books use both words and pictures to tell a story, don't we? And you've just seen all the lovely pictures from inside this book, but do you know who drew them? Not Amy, although she did, you're right though, she did draw some to begin with. She drew the initial ones, which gave us um, the initial idea for the book. But, as a good guess, uh, the final illustrations were drawn by Carlos Vélez. Um, now, Carlos lives all the way over in Mexico, and he couldn't be here today because Mexico's really far away, but he has recorded a video for us, so we are going to have a little look at this video from Carlos. Hi, hello, hello everyone. Uh, it's an honor for me to greet you and talk about this wonderful book. Uh, my name is Carlos, Carlos Vélez Aguilera, and I'm from Mexico City, uh, and, and it's, an, it's, it's a pleasure to to talk to you about this book, this this wonderful book that, that, that I I do the illustrations. I, I am the illustrator of this book, so I do the the the, the characters. No, I do uh, the drawings drawings. <laughs> uh, sorry for my English. I I, I speak English. I, I speak English a little. So, just for practice and for fun, but later I speak in Spanish, so it was more clear. Uh, uh, I think uh, Amy, Amy Moreno, hello Amy, <laughs> uh, can translate me. Um, and so I love painting, I love drawing, I love uh, dancing, dancing, uh, tropical music, salsa, I love, I love uh, playing soccer. I love uh, comic books. I love superheroes. I like I like superheroes. I like um, uh, philosophy. Yeah, uh, and, and I like uh, books. I, I love to read books. Uh, so I love many things, but the most the most thing that I love is drawing. And for this, I am illustrator. Um, so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I speak in Spanish now. So, hablaré en español ahora. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Eh, quiero agradecer este, mucho este, a la editorial, a, eh, a Lía, Lía, que estuvo en contacto conmigo de la editorial este, y me ayudó mucho, a Rosie, que es este, mi agente. Aston, a este, Amy, Amy Moreno, eh, que es quien escribió este libro y si no lo hubiera escrito pues yo no hubiera tenido la oportunidad de hacer estas, estas ilustraciones, así que muchísimas gracias Amy, muchísimas gracias a todos y agradecerles también a ustedes este, que pues, pues me estén escuchando y además que puedan este, tener la oportunidad de ver este este, estas ilustraciones y de leer el libro y de leer todas estas cuestiones de las, de las preguntas eh, el libro este, es un libro muy divertido fue muy divertido de hacer aprendí mucho, aprendí muchas palabras nuevas en inglés eh, ¿no? porque estoy aprendiendo todavía este, el idioma eh, aprendí como pues 
cómo va a ser eh, este proceso de hacer este tipo de libros, que, es, que es, estoy empezando un poco a eh, hacer libros como libros este, ilustrados, con grandes ilustraciones. Y, este, y era una premisa muy divertida, ¿no? Como, estas, este, como estos pensamientos, estas preguntas que nos hacemos, ¿no? Este, son como cosas que flotan en el aire, ¿no? Como, como, como sí, como que no, no, no pueden caber dentro de nuestra cabeza, entonces tiene que ser algo que sobrepasa y que es como... Y entonces, claro, los globos, este, es una gran metáfora, ¿no? Como si tuviéramos este, muchos globos alrededor flotando. Este, y entonces eso es muy divertido. Yo cuando... Cuando a mí me llegó el texto y decía ¿no? que se trataba de balloons, <risa> este, ¿no? inmediatamente corrí a ver qué significaba. Y bueno, era globos. Y es, la verdad es que me emocioné muchísimo. ¿no? Este, porque pues, me podía imaginar que iba a poder hacer muchísimos globos, muy coloridos todos, muchos colores, muchas cosas muy divertidas. Eh, yo cuando era niño eh, iba de repente... Los domingos a Coyoacán, ¿no? que es un pobladito ahí de la Ciudad de México, eh, donde hay una iglesita y hay un kiosco, y hay músicos, y hay este, mimos, y venden elotes, y venden nieves, y, y este, venden quesadillas, y entonces es muy divertido, era muy divertido para mí. Y siempre había un señor con, con muchos globos que vendía, ¿no? que me llamaba muchísimo la atención, porque aparte eran muchísimos, y era como yo quiero todos, ¿no? Y siempre me gustaba, este, aunque nunca me los compraban, o no siempre, salir con un globo de niño y un algodón de azúcar, ¿no? Que casi nunca, pero, este, pero me, me encantaba verlos. Eh, entonces, claro, yo, yo pensaba este, que, que sería muy divertido, y si lo fue, dibujar globos, ¿no? Porque además me daba la oportunidad de poner muchos colores en las ilustraciones. Cosa que no siempre es posible. ¿no? México es un país eh, que tiene muchos colores. ¿no? Es como colores por todas partes. Claro, todos los países tienen colores. Pero me refiero que he tenido la oportunidad de ir a otros países. Y son como muy armónicos. ¿no? Como muy sobrios. Y son construcciones bellísimas pero todo combina muy bien, todo es muy este, equilibrado, ¿no? no hay tanto color. Y en México es como que nos gustan mucho los colores. Entonces hay una casa verde de un lado y del otro lado hay una casa azul y atrás hay una casa rosa y otra casa morada. Y no nos importa si combina o no, pero todos nos gusta pintar nuestras casas de colores. Y además adentro de nuestras casas tenemos muchísimas cosas de muchos colores. ¿no? Bueno, este es mi estudio, por ejemplo, y si no... este <risa> bueno, si pudieran verlo alrededor, tiene muchos, este, muchas cositas y colores y alebrijes y muñequitos y cómics y, y todo tiene mucho color, ¿no? Porque me gusta mucho. Y todo eso lo quise reflejar en el libro. También eh, me, me gustan mucho los personajes, ¿no? Eh, está Eva, sus papás, ¿no? Este, y quise proyectar este, un poco eh, a mi familia, ¿no? Eva es como mi hermana, porque mi hermana era como la más ruidosa y la que más hacía preguntas, yo era más silencioso, entonces me basé un poco en ella para, para hacer este, las ilustraciones. También eh, la cocina de mi abuela fue una inspiración, este, no sé, muchas cosas, ¿no? Este, entonces yo estoy muy contento de haber ilustrado este libro, este, espero que, que les guste mucho que aprendan muchas nuevas palabras en español, así como yo aprendí palabras en inglés, ¿no? que les divierta y que lo lean una y otra vez, que lo vean con ¿no? niños y grandes, este, se entretengan aprendiendo. Y este, pues sería todo lo que diría, podría decir muchas cosas más, pero bueno, este, muchísimas gracias, muchísimas gracias nuevamente a todos, ¿no? Elía, este, Rosie. Amy eh, a la editorial este, muchas gracias a ustedes me encanta me encanta la oportunidad de haber hecho estas ilustraciones eh, y ojalá que pueda ilustrar muchos libros más ¿no? me emociona mucho que, 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 que en esos, esos países este, tan lejanos ¿no? Edimburgo que se me hace como este, Escocia ¿no? Inglaterra que, que son como como lugares que se me hacen como de cuentos de hadas, ¿no? Como este, 
de fantásticos con tanta historia y, y, y donde además sé que, 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 que tienen libros y que publican libros realmente hermosos y maravillosos y entonces para mí ha sido un honor quiero agradecerles mucho nuevamente estoy muy feliz I'm very very happy so uh, thanks thanks a lot bye bye <laughs> adiós Isn't Carlos Velas just the smiliest, loveliest man ever? He's so lovely. Um, now, one of my favorite things about this book is that Eva has so many questions. Uh, she has billions of questions, in fact, of all different shapes and sizes. And while I maybe don't quite have a billion questions myself, I do have some questions for you, Amy. And I'm sure some of the audience here maybe do as well. So I, I just wanted to start by asking you, where did the idea for this story start for you and where did you where, where did the concept of the balloons first kind of come into your head um, i'll just say first of all the kids are doing really really well so good work parents <laughs> good work kids often when i read this book children have lots and lots of questions so if you can like hold on to it like it's your balloon and you'll get a chance to ask them after i've answered my questions does that sound okay so hold on to it just for a little bit longer um the idea of, for the book came from the questions from my own children um, they were hammering me with questions one day. They were two and five at that time, and I just started writing them down. Um, I thought there's got to be something in this. It's a, maybe it's a poem, maybe it's a story. Um, and then I had the idea of the character of, of Eva, and she was called Evie initially, um, and how she would carry these questions around and how that would feel to her. And it was the idea of them getting bigger when they don't get answered and how that would expand. And then I thought of the balloon, of them being inside a balloon. Yeah. And to be conscious of them being around her, but maybe other people wouldn't. That's great. I love it. It's just, I love the way that it captures the imagination. And we had Carlos there talking about how it reminded him of the like balloon seller mm -hmm. from when he was a kid. Um, it's just such a vivid image and it works so, so beautifully. Did you intend from the start that you would write it in a combination of English and Spanish? I write for adults and for children. Um, we speak English and Spanish at home, and I would say Scots feels like a mother tongue to me, although I don't speak it as well as understand it. So I use all three in my writing, um, particularly for adults, in a way that just feels natural. This one was a bit more planned in where the English and Spanish would work together. But right from the start, it felt like it had to be in both languages because the questions I was getting at home were a mixture as well. And as a parent, so I mean, you're raising bi your children mm. are bi bilingual. Um, I imagine you're able to find children's books that are in English or children's books that are in Spanish. But is it? Do you find it difficult to source books that reflect the experience that they're having growing up with with both languages? Yeah, we have loads of really beautiful monolingual books in both English and Spanish, and quite a lot that are translated. So you'll get the original English text and then the Spanish below it, um, which is useful. I used to work as a translator, so I can't kind of take my translator's hat off and I sort of critically go through it and think I wouldn't, I wouldn't translate it like that. Um, but finding books that reflect how we speak at home is quite difficult. There's one called <coughs> I Love Saturdays y Domingos by Alma Flor Ada, which is about a little girl who visits her English-speaking and Spanish-speaking family and she switches languages as she visits them. That felt like a kind of true reflection. Um, another one is the Dora the Explorer books those were really the only ones that I could find that felt similar to how we use language at home. Yeah, so it, it felt to me like there was a, a gap. A gap, <laughs> yeah. It, I think, I think it's, it's relatively rare to see that kind of code switching mm. represented in a book for young children, which is obviously, you know, the, the experience is the way that your kind of home life works. Um, I think I'd mentioned to you before that I grew up bilingual speaking English and Gaelic, but Gaelic wasn't spoken in my home. It was only something that I spoke in school and my parents, I think, made really big efforts to, um, to put me in extracurriculars and things where I could have more time speaking Gaelic outside of the classroom. Whereas with your family, 
it's, it's kind of the opposite, isn't it? That they're presumably in, in school in English. So what's the balance of Spanish to English like at home? Is it more the other, more Spanish than English? Is it the kind of the opposite of what Ava's family is like? Or is, does no, it just change all the time? When I was pregnant with Sophia, I looked into the, the science of language learning and there's different methods you can use at home to enforce languages. Um, then abandoned all of that and we just went with what felt natural to us. So me and my husband speak, I would say, 90, 95% Spanish together. Um, he speaks Spanish to the children mostly, and then I mostly speak English to them. But then we play games in Spanish. We have some dolls that don't speak English, so if you don't speak <laughs> to them in Spanish, they, they can't play with you. Um, we have nice books and comics and, and board, some board games. But the community language does dominate. It, yeah. it is hard work. Uh -huh. um, and I do have lists on my phone of making sure that I'm, I'm, I'm doing that input. Yeah. Um, if I don't put the effort in, then I do worry that Spanish kind of will fall away. Well, that's I, I, I will say the way that we switch is much more messy than in the book. <laughs> um, I think that sometimes we have, like, my, my brother and his girlfriend are here, and I sometimes forget, and we just switch back and forward, and you can see them. <laughs> <laughs> like understanding parts and not other parts and that's really natural though and I know that from from growing up speaking Gaelic and that there are there are some words in one language or the other that you just they just don't translate they don't mm. express it the same way are there any words in Spanish that you think there's just not a good version of it in English there is a really good verb in Spanish which is estrenar which is like a what would you call it if a film has like a first release you said it like a first, like a, not a like, preview. Like a preview, like premiere? A kind of pr premiere. Yeah. But you can do it to your clothing, so you can estrenar <laughs> like your new books, or you can estrenar like your, your fancy clothes. That's like amazing. That. It doesn't translate. Because that's such a feeling as well. Like oh, we've yeah. all had that of like yeah. new outfit, first yeah. outing. Yeah. That's, that's fab. The first time I wore these dungarees, yeah. <laughs> it was a great feeling. Or your matching jumper. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was less of a good one. <laughs> um, you spent four years living and working in Peru, that's mm. right, isn't it? What did you miss the most about Scotland while you were in Peru? And what do you miss the most about Peru now that you live in Scotland again? Um, aside from people, yeah. uh, we lived in a desert coastal region in Peru. And um, it was the seasons that I missed. We had hot and a bit less hot. And that was the kind of variation all year round. Sounds great. Um, <laughs> there was like no, like very little vegetation. Yeah. So lots of sand. And um, there was grass, but it was like, like blades that would cut your feet. Wow. The first time my husband took me to a, it's this oasis quite near where we lived that had been turned into a park and I whipped my shoes off and he was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I went to walk on the grass, it literally slices your feet up. Ooh. I learned that the hard way. Uh, and bird song, I really missed bird song. I, I got a um, pirate DVD of Pride and Prejudice and I just used to play the, the opening scene over and over because it was just bird song in a garden. Oh. I really missed that. And then the other way, like aside from people and, and my pets that I left behind, uh, it's the kind of outdoor culture in Peru that I miss. We don't have that here because of the weather and we're much more structured here about our free time, um, which wasn't my experience there. And again, with the outdoor culture, you have outdoor markets and more street food and that kind of side of yeah. it. I, I do try to cook the food here, but it's not hugely authentic. Uh, it's okay, great. yeah, like special spices and things. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I bemoan the lack of outdoor culture, but I feel like we struggled through that for two years during the pandemic and it was a failed yeah. experiment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, obviously, as we said, you'd met up with Carlos earlier mm. this um, summer, which was really lovely to get to pull off and uh, really nice. I really enjoyed getting to see you guys meet for the first time. But thinking back to when you first saw Carlos's drawings of Ava and her family, like for the first time. How, how did that feel? Because obviously you kind of made, had quite a strong vision in your head that you'd done to begin with. It was much better. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had done, like Sally said, I'd done a, I was saying this to Sally earlier, I didn't know what was like the done thing with publishing. So I had an idea in my head of what the book would look like. And I made a little book and I, I not very like high tech. So I photocopied it and I had to cut the words out and photocopy them into things and then I coloured it in with my children's pencils. So it wasn't what you're meant to do, but it seems to have <laughs> worked. Um, so I had an idea of what the characters would look like, um, but I mean, not to this. Yeah. I hadn't even imagined they'd be as amazing as this. And the whole idea of 
putting the questions into a balloon that was shaped like the question, I hadn't, that hadn't even entered my mind. Yeah. And that adds so much to the story. Yeah. Um, they're so beautiful. There are some really fun ones. Do you have a favorite? My favorite one is the, what can I do about all the plastic in the ocean? Okay, yeah, that's on the front um, of our it's just coloring sheets, isn't it? Let me see yeah. if I can find it here. It's quite near the start, I think. Is it? Have I gone past it? Manages oh, to be yeah. kind of it's my favorite as well, like I think. beautiful it's just and sad, and there's so much within it. Every time I look at it, like I see something different. Yeah. Now, that's another really clever thing that Carlos has done. Throughout the book, he's left little Easter eggs. So you'll find like um, La Alpaca Magica, like the, the superhero character. There's like alpaca toys uh, on, the, on the shelf. And there's a Loch Ness monster somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and yeah, look for it. Oh, I've just yeah. spotted crocodile wellies on yeah, the same the page as the crocodile yeah. balloon. That's, I, I, I didn't even realize that that was there. That's yeah. amazing. Um, uh, we saw Carlos talk about his portrayal of Ava was inspired a little bit by his sister and um, the kitchen in the book is based on his abuelita's kitchen from when he was growing up, which is really, really lovely. Um, and in that way, there are little bits of his family in the book and we know that the story and characters and questions here are inspired a lot by your own family as well and, and your children's questions. Are there any particular questions that made it into the book that you remember your own kids asking for the first time or... Some of them I do. Why, were, why are oranges orange was from my daughter. <laughs> um, the, the space, the why, what, what did the first people, who were the first people who spoke and what did they say? They both asked me that's individually. That's so deep. Um, that's and such that's, a deep question. And, and, you, and you can't answer it. <laughs> it's one of these questions that I don't know and, and nobody knows. I mean, that's a lot of what this book is about, isn't yeah. it, really? It's about asking questions and maybe we don't know yeah. the, the answers. Yeah. That's great. Um, right, so I'm just a little bit mindful of the time, and I've blethered on quite a bit. Does anybody else have any questions for do, Amy? Do any of the kids have questions? Because you've done so well waiting through all the adults talking. Do you have any questions? It could be about the book. It could be a question in the book. It could be your own question. I know this one has questions. <laughs> Not today. Not today. And it's part of the story. I don't know. I hadn't. Um, I think the character could maybe do something else. Um, I like the magical realism aspect, which also fits in really well with Latin American literature in general. Um, so maybe that family with another magical realism thing happening. Yet the the language um, made it more complicated for me, but it's been what's really um, resonated with a lot of readers. Uh, so I would really like to do that again. Um, people who speak both languages at home have enjoyed it, and also uh, monolingual English-speaking families have really appreciated that learning um, opportunity, and have actually found it quite easy to acquire the words um, through that style. We use a lot of cognates, so there's a lot of words, dragon, dragon, you can kind of guess, or you can guess within the context. Um, and they've really enjoyed that sort of educational entertainment aspect of it, so I'd like to do that again. Yeah. Any other questions? Any wee folk have any questions? Sure. Do you have a favourite balloon memory? <laughs> we actually didn't have balloons at home for a very long time because one child liked bouncing on balloons and one child went, no, 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 until it popped. So we just didn't have them because it caused too much strife. So I have a strife balloon memory rather than a <laughs> happy balloon memory. So we have a least favourite balloon memory. <laughs> I used, I used to just pop them. They'd bring them home for a party. It's like, oh, no, it's, it's gone. Because I knew it would just cause all this, uh, the problem of the bouncing and the crying. So... <laughs> The book. Your favourite bit um, of writing the book. I, I think that the back and forth, um, I hadn't expected it to be, it, it, it was quite a long process. I think 
because of the dual language aspect and because of the questions being contained within an illustration, um, there was a lot of sort of communication via the public, via Floris between me and Carlos. And I really enjoyed that because it was a huge learning experience. And it meant that I got to see his illustrations develop from a very early stage until the finished product, which I don't think happens all the time. No, yeah. Um, so it was really special to be able to see that. And it also meant that my writing developed as his illustrations did, which is really special. Right. We've got time for one more if anyone has one. Yep. I didn't get to choose the illustrator. Um, I was just really, really lucky that Floris chose a wonderful illustrator who represents that side of the, the culture. Although like we speak Spanish at home and I lived in Peru, I am not Peruvian. Um, so it was really important to have the English speaking and the Spanish speaking and the sort of both European and Latin American sides represented. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I find it really lovely. I loved watching Carlos's video for the first time and hearing how your story resonated mm, with him because yeah. it, was, it was just really, really sweet to, to get that, um, his perspective because he was obviously just so excited to, to illustrate this. And yeah. it's such a beautiful transatlantic collaboration. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. It's worked really well. Right, I think that we will finish up there. We have. Uh, just before we finish, um, sorry, I have a little bit left to say. Uh, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Vesna and the lovely staff at the Children's Library for hosting us so warmly. Uh, libraries are really important spaces and it's such an important resource and it's great to be able to partner with them on real life events again. If you're not a member of Edinburgh Libraries, you should really think about joining. It's free and it will make your life more exciting and enjoyable. Uh, you could do it right now if you speak to Vesna at the desk or any time in the future. She would be delighted to help you. We have copies of the book, which is amazing, for sale in the next room. And I'm sure Amy would be happy to sign them yeah. for you. We also have more juice and cake in the kitchen. So please come and take a piece of that. You get cake now. You've done so well. <laughs> thank you, kids. Um, thank you all so much for coming. And let's hear it one last time for Amy Murray.